What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and having a great day. Today we are reviewing the 2022 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. Huge thank you to Matt Newman over at Coon Sterling Ford located here in Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Mustang EcoBoost or any Ford product, I'll be sure to have Matt's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. With that said, let's get into the video. Before we get into the exterior and performance part of this video, I greatly appreciate it if each and every one of you guys would give this video a big thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button and leave a comment in the comment section down below. All those likes, comments, and subscriptions really help my channel and the YouTube algorithm and YouTube will promote my videos more. But with that said, let's get into the video. So like I said, this is a 2022 Ford Mustang EcoBoost convertible. And this particular one has been painted in the $495 rapid red metallic, which looks absolutely fantastic in the sunlight. However, we have no sunlight right now. So at the top of the hood, you will notice you have two hood scoops and just below your hood is where you will find your LED headlights with signature lighting. And below those is where you will find your halogen turn signals. What's cool about this particular Mustang EcoBoost is that it has the $1,195 black accent package, which gives you a black pony grille, as well as black 19 inch wheels, as well as black mirror caps, black pony badges, both front and rear. And you get a black painted roof with the coupe. This one is a convertible. So we'll get to that here in a second. But at the bottom of your front bumper, you have a pretty aggressive front splitter which matches your black grill very, very nicely. Just behind your front splitter is where you will find your 19 inch black wheels wrapped in 25540 Pirelli P0 Nero all season tires. Give you guys a view of that tread pattern right there. Like I said, these 19 inch black wheels do come with the black accent package. You know what else comes with the black accent package are these black mirror caps these mirrors also do have blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand corner of the driver side mirror and on the upper right hand corner of the passenger side mirror body color door handles and at the top you will notice you have a black canvas convertible at the bottom of both your driver and passenger doors you have actually pretty decently aggressive side skirts which look really good in collaboration not only with your front splitter but also your rear diffuser again 19 inch wheels capless filler neck all you got to do is push on that it will open up push on that again and it will lock at the top of the rear end is where you'll find your black deck lid spoiler and below that is where you'll find your black pony badge again those two come with the black accent package you also do get led sequential taillights on the mustang ecoboost and just below your black deck lid spoiler you have a smoked third brake light as well as your rear view camera at the bottom of the rear bumper is where you'll find your rear view sensors those rear view sensors come a part of the $2,600 EcoBoost high equipment group you also have your backup light and your rear diffuser and you may be able to notice is that just above your dual exhaust you have a reflector on the driver side and a reflector on the passenger side and below that you have your chrome tipped exhaust so that's about it for the exterior of the Mustang EcoBoost other than you have an antenna on the passenger side on the rear three quarter panel. But yeah, like I said, that's about it for this Mustang EcoBoost. Not too many options on this particular one. However, I still think this thing looks really, really good. And I think it looks even better because it has that black accent package. So if you guys are a fan of black accents on any vehicle, but in a sports car in particular, definitely get the black accent package on your Mustang EcoBoost. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think of the Mustang EcoBoost in the comment section down below. So like I said, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think of it. But with all that said, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder that makes 310 horsepower and 350 pound feet of torque. This particular EcoBoost is made into a six speed manual transmission for a zero to 60 time in five seconds. If you guys are wondering about fuel economy with the six speed manual, you can achieve 20 miles per gallon in the city, 
27 miles per gallon on the highway for 23 miles per gallon combined. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far today, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys think of the Mustang EcoBoost. Also hit that subscribe button. Another thing, I am doing an LS swap to a 1987 Ford F-150. So if that is something that piques your interest, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. With that out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving into the interior, you do get keyless access. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across these four hash marks and the vehicle will lock. So if I grab onto here, you can see the vehicle locked, but I ran my finger across the back of the door handle, which in turn triggered it to unlock. Taking a look at the door panel, this part of the door panel is leather wrapped with some accent colored stitching. Just above that, you have some cloth type of material, aluminum door handle, unlock and lock buttons. You have automatic up and down front windows, but you do not get automatic down rear windows. So you can see you have one window switch. This one window switch will put these two rear windows down at the same time. Power mirror adjustment controls at the front of that. This is a grab handle on to close your door and then very, very minimal storage space at the bottom of the door panel. So like I mentioned, this does have the $2,600 EcoBoost High Equipment Group. So you do get a nine speaker stereo. You also get a six way power driver seat and a four way power passenger seat. This interior color is called ceramic cloth, but let's move into the interior and let's fire up that EcoBoost four cylinder. So to fire up the EcoBoost, all you gotta do, key fob in the interior, put your foot down on the clutch and push to start. Make sure you're in neutral when you let off of the clutch so you don't stall it. This button right over here will control the dimness of your backlit gauges as well as your screen. And this will brighten your backlit gauges as well as your screen. You have your headlight controls over here. So if I twist this all the way to the left, that's headlights off. Twist it one to the right, that is daytime running lights on. Twist it one more time to the right, that is headlights always on. And then twist it all the way to the right, and that is headlights automatic. Just surrounding that, you may notice you have some faux carbon fiber trim that flows through the dash to the passenger side of the vehicle. You have a Mustang badge right over here. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Leather wrap dash at the top. Let's talk about what's going on here in the screen as well as your gauges. So you have an analog RPM gauge on the left-hand side. You have an analog speedometer on the right-hand side. You get a little productivity screen in between both of them, but just below your analog RPM gauge is where you'll find your coolant temperature and just below your analog speedometer is where you'll find your fuel gauge. But let's talk about what's going on here in our productivity screen. So you have a digital speedometer readout at the center. You have tire pressure. You have all these different air fuel ratios, gauge details, all these different things. You can go through that. Distance to empty, and then it goes back to your digital speedometer. You can also go through your different trip slash fuel stuff. So go into here. You can see trip one, trip two, fuel economy, fuel history. Back to that. Trap track apps. You can go through your accelerometer, accelerometer, acceleration timer, brake performance. You can actually do line locks. So you can click on that. You can hold your brake down and uh, yeah, that will initialize your line lock. So it makes it very easy to do burnouts, lap timer, launch control, blah, 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 driver assist. It's kind of cool to see all that uh, stuff trickle down to the EcoBoost. Here are all your driver assistance features. So I'm gonna actually read through that for you guys. So you have blind spot monitoring, you have pre-collision assist, cross traffic alert, cruise control this actually has adaptive cruise control hill start assist lane keeping system rear parking aid and then it brings you back to the top so right over here if i press on that that will turn the lane keeping system on press that again that turns the lane keeping system off this is your turn signal that's what your turn signal sounds like pull back on that that turns your high beams on and then right over here this is your windshield wiper stock so if i pull back that will wash the front windshield so yeah that's about that controls on the left hand side of the steering wheel you got volume up volume down volume mute back on the track to go forward on a track or switch between your different am fm or sirius xm presets let's take a listen to the ecoboost's horn 
that's what that horn sounds like. These controls control your productivity screen. One thing I didn't mention on your productivity screen is that on the lower left-hand side of it is where you will find your odometer. Like I said, this does have the EcoBoost High Equipment Group. So what you get with the EcoBoost High Equipment Group, which is a $2,600 option, you get the eight inch Sync 3 infotainment with wired Apple CarPlay, as well as wired Android Auto. You also get that nine speaker stereo, as well as dual zone climate control, rear parking sensors, and selectable drive modes, and Sirius XM. So you can see you have a mode toggle switch so you can go in between your different modes you got normal sport plus track drag and snow wet i leave it in normal because i'm not going to do anything crazy another option that this ecoboost does have is the 725 dollars ford safe and smart package which includes the adaptive cruise control and voice activated navigation with sirius xm so right over here you got your adaptive cruise control stuff and then down here, this is to hang up on a phone call, this is to pick up on a phone call, this is to speak to the vehicle, and this will switch between your different media. So you got AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth audio, whatever, that is the button that you would press. Click over here, and that will mute your audio system. So we can talk about this screen for a bit. This is Sync 3, you guys have probably seen this before if you've seen any Ford product videos. You get your audio information, climate stuff on screen, you get your phone stuff, navigation stuff, your different apps and your different settings. So this is one setting screen, this is two setting screens, and this is three setting screens. And uh, that is what your climate control stuff looks like. Climate control stack down here, volume knob, tuning knob to go back on a track, to go forward on a track, to play or pause on a track. This will bring you into your sound settings. And if I press this button here in the center, this will turn the audio on or off. Right down here, get your engine stop start button. Hazards, traction control on or off. This will bring you into your steering feel. So you got normal, sport, and comfort. I leave it in normal. And then these are your different drive modes. USB-A port as well as a 12 volt power outlet. Like I said, this does have the six speed manual transmission. So to go into reverse, make sure you have your foot on the clutch, pull up on the gear shift, go all the way to the left and up. And that will bring up your rear view camera. And now we are in reverse. You got two cup holders here. You have a manual emergency brake, which is very nice to see nowadays. Over here, you have a lockable glove box with actually a good amount of storage space. You can fit your owner's manual, napkins, straws, a couple snacks, whatever you want to put in there. Up top here, frameless auto dimming rear view mirror. This is your driver's side light. This is your passenger side light. These are the buttons to turn them on or off. If you guys want to open up your convertible roof, you pull this down and then twist this to the right and now it will be able to open up. So press on this right here and your convertible roof will come down. And now the convertible is retracted and you can see that beautiful cloudy sky. But today is actually the perfect day to have a convertible. But if you guys do want the convertible EcoBoost, that is a $5,000 option. So just keep that in mind. The coupe is $5,000 cheaper than this convertible. Rear seat, you have a little bit of leg room, but when the uh, top is down, you have very, very little headroom. So if you're over like 5'3", headroom is not looking too good for you in those rear seats. So let's open this up. This is your vanity mirror with two vanity lights. Same thing for the passenger vanity mirror with two vanity lights. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, for options wise on this EcoBoost Mustang. Um, I actually think this EcoBoost is a very good car for those of you guys who are looking for a sports car, but you don't really care that much about the speed, but you want something that's a convertible. You want something maybe that you can get a manual or maybe you want something that you can get a 10 speed automatic transmission. So the options are there. You can get this thing in a coupe. You can get this thing in a convertible. You can get this thing with a 10 speed automatic, or you can get this thing with a six speed manual like we have here today so a few different options that you can get with the EcoBoost it's not too loud um, so I'm gonna actually put it into sport mode you can rev it up a little bit you can hear the turbo you can hear psh, psh, psh. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting about when you put it into sport plus mode 
is that it pumps in audio through the speakers. But I mean, like I said, if you don't really care that much about speed, this might be the car for you because it's got the top down, you can get all your different senses between the sense of smell, the hearing, the seeing, um, then the convertible is for you. And you know, this thing is actually still pretty quick. I mean, it's got 310 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. I just came out of the Ford Raptor, so I am a little bit jaded to speed because that thing was actually pretty dang quick. And I also drove my 2010 Camaro SS, which makes well over 400 wheel horsepower. Um, so maybe this thing doesn't feel like a Hellcat to me, but it's still pretty quick. Like for those of you guys who are not usually in like V8 powered things, I think this thing will actually be pretty dang quick for you and it's actually very engaging because it's got that six speed manual transmission. But you know, one more thing I wanted to show you guys before we moved into the driving portion of the review has to do with trunk space. So you have the trunk button on your key fob. So let's pop open the trunk and take a look at the storage space. So one thing is the trunk inlet is not that big and that's kind of the issue with my 2010 Camaro SS is that the trunk opening is not that big so you can't really fit big items into the trunk because of that opening however the trunk is still a decent size I'd say you could probably fit one maybe two carry-on suitcases back here but I don't think you guys are getting this EcoBoost to have a big trunk to store or haul around a lot of different miscellaneous items Obviously, if you get stuck in this trunk, you can pull on this and um, that's how you get out of it. But that's about it for the interior, the exterior, and the performance. So now I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, guys, and now on to the driving portion of the review. I have the side windows up, but I have the top down. So I am a little bit worried about audio but if we have an issue, I can always pull over and put the top up. But I do wanna leave the top down because today is the kind of day that everybody's gonna have their top down. Today's weather is literally why you buy a convertible. It's 68 degrees out, it's sunny with a mix of clouds, but still sunny and it's just like the perfect temperature to drive around with the top down. So, I mean, if you guys are buying a convertible, I think you guys wanna see what it's like to drive around with the top down. So I got the top down, enjoying the beautiful weather and um i mean today is literally like i said the day that you know the reason that you buy a convertible so we're gonna do um a little driving portion of the video i'm hoping the traffic's not too bad and i hope people don't look at me too crazy but take a listen to the turbo whistle i'm not sure if the gopro is gonna pick it up because you know the gopro the mic pickup is not as good as like my ears obviously and what it's like in real life but I'm hoping that it picked that up I really don't think it did but just keep in mind that at low rpms when it's spooling up the turbo you can really hear it go when you let off it's pretty cool but uh yeah I'm hoping the audio is good with the top down I'm a little worried like I said but I think I want to give you guys the real feel of what it's like to drive this car so that's what we're gonna do you can hear the pumped in audio in Sport Plus mode. Hear it? Not the biggest fan of that pumped in audio, but I can always turn it off by just going back into normal mode. So now we're back in normal mode and it's a lot quieter. Listen, you don't get as much pumped in audio. And I can tell already that it's going to be a little bit loud, so I'm going to try to keep the speeds down, um, you know, just for sake of wind noise. But this thing's a lot of fun, and it's definitely engaging when you get the six-speed manual as a, uh, compared to the ten-speed automatic. Yeah, you got paddle shifters as well as a gear shifter that you can up upshift and downshift with the ten-speed. But if you guys are wanting like a driver's feel, then you're probably going to want to get the six-speed manual. It's definitely more fun to drive than the 10-speed automatic even though the 10-speed automatic is definitely going to be faster from 0 to 60 or in roll racing stuff like that the 10-speed is gonna win the race but you know like I said for driver engagement I think the six-speed manual is a better option one thing that's nice about this EcoBoost and I'm gonna go back into gauge mode and I'm gonna bring my digital speedometer readout at the center but one thing that's nice is that this manual is actually very easy to drive 
Um, yeah, it's got a little bit less torque, or actually a good bit less torque than what you would find in like the uh, Mustang GT. However, it's still like when getting in, getting up and going, it's not too hard to get it up and go. Sometimes when you get in cars with, you know, not crazy torque, it's a little bit difficult to get it up and going, but that's not the case with this. I mean, this thing does also have 350 pound-feet of torque. But I did want to talk about the MSRP. So let's throw up the window sticker on screen right now and talk about the MSRP. So the MSRP of this particular Mustang EcoBoost is $39,795. Let me know what you guys think of that price in the comment section down below. Like I said, you get a pretty fun driving package. You get the six speed manual. You get a pretty decent or pretty potent power plant. Yeah, it's not gonna be as fast as what you'd find in the Mustang GT. However, I mean, it still has a good amount of power. Like I said, for those of you guys who are not used to like Hellcat power levels or Mustang GT power levels, Mustang Mach 1 power levels, this thing still is pretty potent and it's still a lot of fun to drive because it's got the six speed manual transmission. So I'm a little bit worried about the wind noise, especially right now, but we'll do a little acceleration. We'll go into third gear. So not crazy acceleration, but still it's got enough power to get you up and going and still give you, it still gives you enough power to have a little bit of fun. But when we get to this stoplight here, I'm probably going to put the top up because um, I think the wind noise is pretty bad. So I'm going to go down to a slower speed and I got to reduce the speed. Okay. I think now the top will go up. Let's see top speed top deactivated reduced speed so how fast we got to go all right i'm gonna stop right here put the top up i don't want to but for the sake of sound i think i have to so we'll pull down and then twist this thing back to the left now the top is good to go and uh, we're gonna have better audio unfortunately I mean I really wanted to keep the top up but it's a little bit windy outside and even with the windows up it's still I think picking up some wind noise which is exactly what we don't want on a video like this so I'm gonna roll the back windows up as well so now you guys are gonna be able to hear me just a bit better we'll do a little acceleration here at this light So yeah, it doesn't sound like a Mustang GT, but it's still fun to drive. Like it, it is engaging. Like I said, gotta get the six speed manual if you want an engaging driving experience. You can also modify these things to make a pretty dang good amount of power. And I know that Ford and other motors that they, or other EcoBoost motors, they overbuild the engines to handle more power, a lot more power than stock. So. You could you know throw a bigger turbo on this you could tune this thing and you could make a lot more power yes is it going to void your warranty of course it's going to void your warranty but even like at a stock level it's still enough power to get you in trouble you know you can get in trouble with this you can speed with this so if that's what you guys are looking for but you just still don't want to break the bank by getting like a mustang gt then you know this thing's got enough power but let's do a little acceleration Nothing crazy. So I'm gonna go into sport mode and I'm gonna show you guys what sport mode sounds like. You can hear instantly that it starts pumping in more audio, listen. See what I'm talking about? Pumps in more audio than it does with it in normal mode to a I'll take a left here got a nice cyber orange Bronco but one thing you'll notice is when you put it into sport mode as compared to regular mode is that the steering tightens up so 
just keep that in mind. Throttle response is greater in sport mode. Steering tightens up. Um, if you guys want it in sport mode, but you want your steering in a different mode, you can switch your steering into comfort mode, which really loosens it up. Or you can throw it back into normal mode, which tightens it up just a little bit. And then you throw it into sport mode and it really, really tightens up. So if you guys are going through the twisties and you want a little bit more like steering engagement, because I don't think it really gives you more steering feel, sport mode is a good steering feel. Do another little acceleration. Suspension is actually pretty nice. It's like in the middle of being firm and comfortable. So I think Ford tuned their suspension very, very well on the Mustang EcoBoost because like I said, it's a great mix of being firm as well as comfortable. So for a daily driving as well as like back road ripping characteristics, I think Ford did a great job tuning this suspension. So there's a Mustang GT and you can see the Mustang GT definitely has a uh, you know nicer brakes and nicer wheels and stuff like that and a better sound but like I said you know engine aside the EcoBoost Mustang is still a very good package so if you guys like I said are looking for something that's not too fast but it's still you know it's gonna get your fix of speed <coughs> and handling I think you guys are gonna want to go out and test drive a Mustang EcoBoost especially with the manual very engaging feel you can throw it into your different modes Throttle response is a lot greater in the Sport Plus mode, but we'll go back into normal mode. And uh, if you guys just want a relaxed driving feel, normal mode is the mode you're gonna wanna be in. Blind spots with the top down are non-existent. With the top up, you got a nice little blind spot right there, but you know, like I said, you put the top down, you got no blind spots. One more thing that I do wanna say before we end out today's video is that, yes, you can still get in trouble with the Mustang EcoBoost, but it's a lot harder to get in trouble. And you can honestly use a lot more of the power because it's got less power than a Mustang GT or a Dodge Challenger Hellcat or something like that. So you can almost have more fun driving the EcoBoost as compared to the V8 options because of that. So you can use more of the RPM range. You can really get on it and still not get in too much trouble. I mean, obviously if you wind out or row through all the gears and you're going 130 miles an hour down the highway, obviously you're gonna get in trouble. But I'm saying like, just accelerating, you know, flooring it from first to fourth gear, not going all the way through fourth, fourth gear, but you're still not going too fast, which is really nice. And that's why I think the EcoBoost is a great option. But that's about it for today's video, guys. If you guys did enjoy the video, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think of the Mustang EcoBoost. If you weren't gonna get the Mustang EcoBoost, what would you compare this to? Like, let's say you're cross shopping something with the Mustang EcoBoost, what vehicle is that? But like I said, that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button. But like I said, that's it for today's video. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.